I want to break down the latest on all of this here. So let's bring in Alex Hadem, research geologist at the USGS. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us this morning. Thank you for having me. Of course. Well, first off, I know it's kind of a basic question. Everyone has heard about earthquakes. They know what they can do. But explain to me some of the science behind earthquakes and how they happen. Yeah, great question. So an earthquake is the sudden movement of one block of rock past another deep within the earth. And that's exactly what happened yesterday. It happened in an area where we might not expect earthquakes to happen as frequently, um, but they obviously do happen as we experienced yesterday. So what occurred was uh, about uh, three miles in depth, yeah, two blocks of rock that were part of an ancient plate boundary just slid past each other a little bit. And uh, we had a little bit of uh, moderate shaking that was felt very widely. As you said, New Jersey, most people don't really associate it with earthquakes. So my question, are earthquakes really possible in other states as well? Could they be centered in those states along the East Coast? Yes, they can be. Um, in 2011, there was a magnitude 5.8 earthquake in Virginia that some of you might remember did some damage to the Washington Monument uh, pretty famously. and. I highlight that example just to show that other small magnitude or moderate magnitude events can happen on the East Coast, but again, they are fairly rare. Is there any sort of, I guess, warning at all ahead of an earthquake? Because we always talk about tornado watches that are in effect and then they become warnings. Is there a version of that when you're talking about earthquakes? So. Um, not on the East Coast, but there is an alert system in place on the West Coast where we uh, expect earthquakes to happen a lot more frequently. So there is a shake alert system that provides a few seconds of early warning before an earthquake comes. The earthquake is detected further away from where the people are. And by the time the earthquake shaking reaches where people are living, they have a, a few seconds of warning, uh, which is a really incredible system. But uh, because earthquakes are so infrequent um, on the East Coast, there isn't such a system in place there. Talk to me about how the intensity of earthquakes are measured, because I know at one point the Richter scale, of course, was big. It's it's outdated now. And also tell me where the 4.8 does rank on the overall scale. Great question. So that's right. The the 4.8 number that's circulating is, is the moment magnitude that measures how much energy was actually released by that motion of rock that I was talking about earlier. So there's a, a basically one magnitude number, but there are a lot of intensity numbers that go around. And intensity measures the shaking that you might have felt um, in New Jersey, New York, Philadelphia, and so on. And the intensity tends to decay away from the source. And uh, th that's measured in something called modified Mercalli intensity. It's a scale from, from one to 10. Um, the, the maximum intensity that was felt very close to the epicenter was about uh, five or six, so moderate to strong shaking. Um, and yeah, intensity can decay at a far distance away. And that's why uh, so many people felt it from basically Quebec to Florida yesterday. Tell me about aftershocks, because hours after we had that initial earthquake, there were, of course, some some minor aftershocks that people might not have felt, but there was a fairly large one, 4.0. Are there likely to be more aftershocks in the coming days? And uh, really, what is an aftershock? Is it just another earthquake? Yes, an aftershock is just another earthquake, and they are termed aftershocks because um, you know, small earthquakes can happen all the time, but now we had a big earthquake or, or moderate sized earthquake yesterday. Um, following that, the, the background level of seismicity is disturbed. And so there are more, more earthquakes to come and those are aftershocks. So we expect aftershocks to continue in the coming days and, and weeks ahead. Um, the USGS does provide an aftershock forecast, which is accessible on our website. And I'm looking at the forecast right now. And within the next week, it's looking like a 74% chance of a magnitude three or higher earthquake to occur. So it is typical for aftershocks to be, or earthquakes that follow a main shock like we had yesterday, to be smaller in magnitude. It's really unlikely that there is going to be a larger uh, than magnitude 4.8 event. And that's reflected on the forecast here. There's only a 1% chance of a magnitude five or greater earthquake happening in the next week. And I imagine most of those aftershocks are probably not felt by people in the area because they are what, like a one or a two. So they're not as noticeable to people out there. 
That's correct. Yeah. So I was looking this morning and it seems like there's been more than 25 aftershocks and it looks like about only one of those was truly felt. And that's the larger one you were mentioning yesterday. So many small um, ones and twos will happen. Um, a higher three or a four probably will be felt very close to the source, but I don't, um, yeah, they won't be wi as widely felt as they were, as the magnitude 4.8 was yesterday. Does an earthquake in the area of New Jersey or really anywhere along the East Coast differ in any way from one that would be on the West Coast of the U.S.? Well, that's a great question. So um, the East Coast is uh, not an active plate boundary like it is on the West Coast. On the West Coast, we have the Pacific plate traveling against the North American plate, and there's a lot of expected earthquakes associated with that plate boundary. However, the East Coast is an inactive plate boundary, meaning it was active millions of years ago. And the, even though the plates aren't moving past each other there anymore, the faults that used to help those plates move past each other still exist. And so those faults are ancient and, and typically aren't active, but they were reactivated yesterday. And that reactivation can happen um, rarely from time to time. Um, but the earthquake mechanism itself is very similar. Earthquakes don't really change um, from West Coast to East Coast, they might change in how they move the rock, but the mechanism of the earthquake is the same. What's really special about the earthquake, uh, or any earthquake really in the East Coast, is that uh, due to differences in the rock on the East Coast compared to the West Coast, shaking is felt over a much wider area. And uh, that's why the felt report spanned Canada to Florida yesterday. Um, the, just the type of the rock allows the seismic waves from the earthquake to travel at much further distances um, without slowing down or, or changing their shape very much. All right, Alex Hatem, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here and help break it all down. Anything else you wanna add before I let you go? I'll just add that um, the aftershocks probably will continue for days and weeks ahead, like I said, and remember to keep yourself safe and those around you safe. Um, in case of strong shaking, protect yourself using drop cover and hold on mechanisms. All right, Alex, thank you again for taking the time to be here with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.